Hello, and welcome to CityWorks. I'm your host, Steve Peters. Crime knows no boundaries. It can occur across cities, provinces, and countries. In order to deal with crimes and problems that span across Canada and the world, a federal police force is necessary. We will focus today's show on the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, or RCMP for short. We will find out when the RCMP was formed and why we need them, and what some of the departments are within the police force, as well as many other interesting facts about our federal police force. So please stay tuned to CityWorks. back to City Works. You've probably seen them on television, either on the news or on a TV show. It is not often you see the Mounties here. Generally, the Municipal Police Force or the Ontario Provincial Police deal with all criminal offences in this region, but the RCMP does have an effect on the community indirectly, as well as having a long history in Canada. The, the RCMP was uh, formed in 1873. At the time, uh, the Canadian government was concerned about the situation in what, in what we call Western Canada, the Three Prairie Provinces. And there was no law and order out there. The government was concerned about uh, getting immigration into that part of the country. And uh, given what had taken place uh, in the United States with the American Indian Wars, the Canadian government wanted to avoid a repetition of those problems. So they created the Northwest Mounted Police. And from those beginnings uh, grew what we now have, the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, which is Canada's National Police Service. Uh, we weren't always the National Police Service. Uh, like I said, at one point we were only in the West. We eventually took over and became the National Police Service in 1920. Uh, the RCMP today polices uh, over 700 communities in this country. Uh, we are stationed in every province and the territories. We are the provincial police for eight of the ten provinces. The only two provinces that we are not the provincial police is in Ontario and in Quebec. However, in Ontario and Quebec, we have a strong presence, which is, and we, that presence is there to carry out our federal responsibilities. That's one of the unique features of the RCMP as a police force in comparison to any other police force uh, throughout the world. We actually operate at three levels. We have a federal responsibility, that means we're present throughout the country enforcing federal laws. We have provincial responsibilities in eight of the ten provinces and the territories. And we also do municipal policing. We have municipal contracts with communities throughout Canada. Uh, we actually have in excess of 200 communities uh, to which we provide provincial, uh, provincial and municipal policing. So that makes us quite a, a unique force. We are, we are a national symbol and uh, we are a, a unifying police force. The RCMP, for example, provides uh, police services like identification, lab services to many police forces throughout the country. Uh, in Ontario here, we call ourselves a federal force only because we have the Ontario Provincial Police and we also have all the municipalities have their own police forces. So what do we do here in Ontario? Well, as I said, we provide a federal service, which means we investigate federal laws, enforce federal laws. but. We also work very closely in partnerships with the provincial police force and with all our municipal partners. The, the RCMP a number of years ago made a commitment to uh, go to what we call community policing. You've heard a lot about that. It is a philosophy of doing police work, which we have embraced, uh, which means we work very closely with our police partners and all the other communities. Uh, in terms of some of the areas where we work in, uh, we work in areas like drugs, customs and excise, illegal immigration, 
organized crime. Now, in Ontario, for example, if we take drugs, we will work at what we call the federal level. We work in partnerships with other police forces, but we concentrate our resources at the international and national levels of drug smuggling, which means we will look at an operation, an organization that is operating in Ontario and that has ties throughout the world. We will tackle that, that organization often on our own, but also in partnership with other police forces, the OPP, for example, London Police Force, Metro Police Force. We have long since realized that none of us can do all that work together. So the, as a federal police force, we will concentrate at the national, international level, but we also stay in contact or in partnership with the provincial and municipal police forces. In that way, there's an integration of the work and we serve all the communities. I often get asked the question, well, if you're working at the international level, how do you service our community? How do you service Belleville, Ontario? How do you service St. Thomas? The, the best answer I try to give, or the answer that I think can best explains how we service the community of St. Thomas or Belleville or any other community, is simply in this way. If you have a major organized uh, crime group that's importing drugs or smuggling guns into this country and so on, if we stop this organization from importing drugs into this country, we will have served the community of St. Thomas in this simple way. The 100 kilos of drugs, of cocaine, for example, that we seize at the airport, or the 5,000 kilos that we seized in Quebec that landed in a plane. A plane landed in Quebec, it was full of drugs, 5,000 kilos. Those drugs were destined to be distributed throughout all the communities in Canada. Therefore, the, the 100 kilos that arrives at the airport, and if it's allowed to proceed, will be distributed to all other communities. It, in a way, that is how we service those communities. Once we stop those drugs, it means it doesn't get to Belleville, it doesn't get to St. Thomas, or it doesn't get to Toronto. Now, some people say, well, we never hear of that, or we don't see you present. Uh, it's true, we don't work in uniform, but by stopping those drugs, or by stopping those illegal immigrants, or by dismantling organizations that are uh, bringing contraband, alcohol, and liquor into the country, we actually have serviced all the communities. And it's important that we do that service in partnerships, that we share the information with the other police forces, that we share it with the provincial and municipal police forces, and that we consult with the communities. It is the big challenge for us in Ontario as the federal police force to uh, survey, to find out what the communities want what they need, what their concerns are. The RCMP interacts with other municipal and provincial police forces to deal with various crimes and, in an attempt to be more efficient, have reorganized the detachments across Ontario. In 1993, the RCMP began to do a, a reorganization process in the province of Ontario. And uh, what we basically did was uh, create 12 separate divisions in, uh, in Ontario before we used to have various detachments running various little, little districts and we decided to uh, re-engineer the province into these 12 divisions. In, in the case of London detachment, which is organized, reorganized as of April the uh, 1st of last year, we closed Sarnia detachment and we closed Woodstock detachment. And uh, now London detachment is responsible for an area that extends just east of Woodstock over to Sarnia south to Port Stanley and, and Lake Erie, and north, uh, as far north, just north of Goderich. And uh, we have Lake Huron as part of our, uh, of our uh, territory, too. Um, within the, the, the scope of our, the duties that are performed within this detachment are uh, drug enforcement through London Drug Section, uh, customs enforcement through uh, our Customs and Excise Section, a federal enforcement unit, a, c a commercial crime unit, and a, uh, and a criminal intelligence uh, section that is involved in a joint force operation with the London City Police. 
we have a number of joint force operations going on within uh, within this area. We have a two-member uh, uniform secondment at the mm -hmm. London City Police, which allows us to send over two uh, two members who will who will work with the London City Police in a uniform function. They wear RCMP uniforms. Uh, they carry a uh, a uh, firearm issued by the London Police. But they are they are sworn in under the Police Services Act, which allow them to um, enforce uh, provincial statutes as well as the criminal code. It's a good opportunity for these individuals. Most of them have, that have gone over there have what we call con uh, non-contract experience, which means that they've been in this division for a period of time, and they haven't had the opportunity to do uh, provincial policing duties or normal uniform police functions. So this gives them a very good opportunity to uh, get that kind of experience uh, from a uh, department that is very close to, uh, to this office. We also have uh, a, a member switch or secondment to the London Drug Section. One of their members works here in our drug section and uh, conversely one of, one of ours works with them on a uh, six month secondment. So we have a continual uh, turnover of manpower there which sort of works to uh, uh, forge uh, alliances between uh, the OPP, RCMP, and London City Police, because we all work in, in very close confines here in many areas, uh, in criminal, criminally uh, related matters, as well as customs and excise, and as well as drug enforcement. Um, our commercial crime unit deals a, a lot with, uh, they have a tax program with Revenue Canada Taxation, so they're involved uh, to a large degree w with respect to investigations under Revenue Canada taxation. They also are involved in uh, a number of uh, major investigations, both currently and, and in the past, that deal with uh, fraud on a, uh, on a national and sometimes international level that are perpetrated by people who live within the London District Detachment. Um, we have a uh, First Nations uh, liaison officer. This is something new for uh, for the uh, for our division, these positions were created uh, as London Detachment opened in, in April the 1st. And it allows us the opportunity to uh, go out and deal uh, with some, some problems uh, that the First Nations people are experiencing in, in certain areas. We're not responsible for actively uh, investigating criminal matters. That's the responsibility of, uh, of the Ontario Provincial Police. But we are involved in uh, community-based uh, projects with First Nations in, in a number of areas, in, uh, in uh, the Racing with Drugs program, which is in conjunction with the Ford Motor Company, and, uh, and uh, solvent abuse programs, and um, a number of other programs where we're assisting them on some definite problems that relate to uh, what we call in this division for federal policing services. The RCMP not only interacts with provincial and municipal police forces across the country, they also have a First Nations liaison officer to help native police with federal crimes. I'm uh, the community-based police uh, relations officer here in London and uh, I'm also the First Nations liaison officer and I take care of uh, liaising between the Oneida uh, the Chippewa on the Thames, the Muncie, Delaware, Chippewa of Sarnia, and Kettle and Stony Point. And part of my duty is uh, take care of the police community relations for London Detachment. Uh, for example, if the musical ride was attending uh, in London as they did uh, last May 18th, we uh, set up a display and I coordinated that aspect of it, uh, making sure that everything was um, um, arranged by our detachment to have members there so that if the public had any questions about London detachment members then we would be there and representing London. I am also liaising with the uh, with First Nations in, uh, in our community here and uh, we deal with uh, federal problems. If there are federal problems that occur such as a, an enforcement problem in relation to drugs we would assist uh, the First Nations police say on the Oneida and uh, we'd assist them in, uh, in doing searches as far as uh, an education. We've also attended the uh, First Nations uh, for career, for career days, and that's all part of police community relations as well. 
Smuggling contraband products across the border costs the country tax money. As well, smugglers also bring harmful and dangerous items such as weapons, tobacco, alcohol, and pornography into the country. I'm in charge of the Customs and Excise uh, section for London Detachment. Uh, we're a 17-person section with a public servant, and our responsibility is basically enforcement of the uh, Customs and Excise Act, uh, Customs and Excise Acts, and uh, in what they relate to in this area. Now, predominantly, uh, our section has grown to the size that it has because we have a fairly large area to cover, and uh, we are responsible for the enforcement uh, where. Uh, federal taxes are being evaded on, on various products. Now the main product uh, that uh, most of the people in this area are aware of is the uh, illegal alcohol and uh, tobacco that has been either smuggled into Canada and sold on the uh, black market or the tobacco products that have been illegally made, uh, be it outside of Canada or in Canada and exported and illegally entered or products that uh, are being illegally sold in Canada without any ex federal excise tax pay being paid on them. That's where our main concern is. Now in this area we have a, a major uh, tobacco growing area, so consequently uh, one of the uh, items that we kind of run into a fair amount is the sale or the illegal sale of uh, raw tobacco in which it is uh, after which ground up and made into either illegal cigarettes and sold on the market throughout Canada. And so consequently we are trying to curb this uh, offense. And in addition we are concerned with the uh, illegal making and manufacture and making of tobacco products and selling them within our area and as well throughout the country. Uh, again we have uh, two border uh, concerns. We have the uh, Sarnia area which is part of our uh, detachment region and uh, we are concerned with smuggling in that area and across the waters there. And in addition, uh, across the Lake uh, Erie, we are concerned with the uh, smuggling of uh, any contraband that comes across that area. Now, contraband to us is any product that is uh, not reported to the uh, customs. Now, this would be, uh, could be anything from uh, pitchers to uh, light bulbs to illegal booze and uh, tobacco products. We are, as I say, we're very uh, uh, concerned about any product that's entered into the country. Uh, it could be children, uh, child pornography, it could be pornographic uh, items, uh, it could be illegal weapons. It's part of our concern and therefore our mandate is to uh, combat these areas. Uh, going back again, as I said, our main concern in the present time is the illegal uh, entry of uh, alcohol and tobacco products. You can see that there, uh, I've provided, showed you some samples of uh, tobacco products uh, that have been found in the area uh, that have been uh, cut up and it was being sold in the market and we uh, happen to be seized it locally here. Uh, we've had individuals appear in court uh, at uh, various uh, instances throughout the province in relation to the sale of illegal tobacco products. Uh, I've also uh, provided, shown you some uh, samples there of uh, tobacco products that have been produced in Canada and sold and uh, they have been seized as well. Uh, again, these individuals in relation to the uh, sale of these tobacco products uh, have been, uh, are before the courts. And in, as well, uh, I'd like to advise people that uh, the possession of these Ill illegal products is illegal. They as well can be charged with possession of the illegal products and taken to court and then could end up with a criminal record. Their vehicles or uh, anything uh, used in relation to this crime or even their, uh, the proceeds that they have made from these crimes are, are subject to seizure. And this is, uh, we are working very closely with uh, uh, our proceeds of crime units and any uh, criminal activity where we detect or find proceeds of crime they as well are involved in the investigation and we are proceeding with them to the extent of uh, any individuals found with proceeds, uh, they're having them forfeited uh, as much as we can prove. Drugs are a multi-billion dollar a year industry and in order to halt the flow of illegal drugs into the country and onto the street, a drug section has been formed with other police forces. The London Drug Section is responsible for the uh, identification of drugs in the uh, four counties surrounding the London area, including St. Thomas. Uh, our drug program is targeted towards uh, 
Upper Street uh, international importation levels. Uh, we have a harmonious or a balanced uh, enforcement approach that includes the Ontario Provincial Police and the London City Police. Uh, in this approach, uh, their, their uh, efforts are targeted towards the uh, street level drug traffickers and the uh, Royal Canadian Mounted Police try to target above the street and also target at individuals who are importing the drugs and distributing the drugs at a large scale basis. Uh, part of this program also deals with the uh, education of the general public. Uh, along with our, with our placing partners, we have a very proactive uh, uh, drug enforcement or drug awareness program. Uh, this program is very important because it uh, allows communication with the uh, communities and with the individual groups and different aspects of society. Uh, through this uh, constant dialogue, we can identify where the problems or areas are and we try to uh, deal with those problem areas. Uh, also, the, the education portion is, is uh, very important because with education, we can hope to reach the youth of, of our culture now and uh, maybe we can uh, train them into uh, looking at alternative ways of, of dealing with uh, drug issues. Uh, this, this section has been uh, very successful. Uh, we have uh, made uh, large seizures. Uh, the seizures are, any, are along the whole spectrum in the range of drug enforcement from marijuana and hashish and hash oil to the uh, multi-kill cocaine uh, level. Uh, the, these uh, interdictions are made on a regular basis. Uh, we target these individuals and groups and it takes considerable effort and manpower to target at this type of level. One of the important things to remember with uh, drug enforcement is that there's different segments involved to it. Uh, it's not just the drugs themselves. Uh, there's drugs involved. Uh, the drugs lead to money. There's large cash transactions. And uh, one of the efforts that we try to do is also try to interdict the uh, money that has been made by the individuals or the groups that are involved. Uh, the proceeds of crime legislation is relatively new and uh, we put considerable effort into trying to use that the legislation to its fullest. This unit also has been very successful in that area and large cash seizures have been affected. Uh, also, we have seized uh, vehicles and jewelry, uh, monies, and, and any other kind of quantity or any kind of other thing that you could think of. Uh, there's also a, a, a violent aspect to drugs and uh, in our, in our searches, we are finding more and more that uh, we're identifying guns, uh, uh, loaded, uh, loaded weapons are found on a regular basis, and we have lately have uh, had a trend of uh, seizing more guns uh, with our searches. The Royal Canadian Mounted Police have to deal with many different types of hard-to-detect crimes, such as counterfeiting, tax evasion, corruption, and various commercial crimes. The RCMP Commercial Crime Section here in London, Ontario, is involved in the enforcement of seven specific programs. We currently have six inv investigators involved in this enforcement area. Our primary area of enforcement is the Bankruptcy Act. At the request of the Superintendent of Bankruptcy, we investigate criminal activity, activity associated to this act. Computer crime is an emerging field of enforcement responsibilities for the RCMP Commercial Crime Section. We investigate criminal activities utilizing computer technology and attempt to prosecute under the criminal code any areas that uh, breach the code. Uh, counterfeit technology and the, the introduction of photocopiers and their high grade of re reproductive capabilities has increased the demand for counterfeit enforcement in this particular area. Uh, we enforce counterfeit activities in cooperation with local police departments and usually charge under the criminal code. The tax program is a joint venture that we have with Revenue Canada Taxation where we attempt to recover illicit wealth accumulated through criminal activities utilizing the Income Tax Act. Commercial crime program itself is involved in the enforcement of business related crime which is national, international and interprovincial in scope. The, we also enfor enforce the federal statute associated to the accepting and giving of bribes to government officials and corruption within government. Finally, we also are involved in security fraud enforcement with the Ontario Securities Commission, where we attempt to investigate and prosecute 
allegations of uh, mis -wrong, uh, wrongdoing in the uh, market securities industry. The Federal Enforcement Unit in the RCMP has a wide range of duties and responsibilities, such as investigating and dealing with crimes to and in federal government agencies. We in the uh, Federal Enforcement Unit of the uh, RCMP here in London uh, are comprised of approximately uh, eight members uh, uh, that are considered investigators. Uh, we work for several client agencies. Uh, as an example of this would be the uh, Unemployment Insurance uh, Commission, uh, Canada Immigration, uh, Passport Office, which is part of the uh, external affairs uh, branch of the government. And uh, we're called upon to uh, look at certain investigations uh, within those departments that could be dealing with uh, fraudulent applications. Uh, we also provide uh, a service to to the uh, general public here, uh, uh, dealing with uh, fingerprints, photographs for different applications that these persons will re would require uh, in order to uh, make application to different government departments. Um, we also are involved with uh, the Canada Shipping Act and uh, small vessel regulations, of which uh, we have three boats uh, at this time that are uh, moored at uh, Port Stanley and uh, Sarnia area. They are one of the symbols that help define Canada. And while you might not see them every day, they do play an important role in protecting the country and in turn our city. From fighting drugs to smuggling to educating the public, the Royal Canadian Mounted Police have from early in our history to the present day served our people with distinction. Well, I hope you have learned something about the function of the RCMP and what they do for our community. If you'd like further information, you might want to check out their website and find out more about the RCMP. I'm Steve Peters. Thank you for watching CityWorks.